All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to use diagonalization to define the exponential of a matrix. So let us define e to the a. And the question is, how do you do this? Well, uh, of course, this is a weird function, the exponential function, but we do know how to calculate powers of a matrix. We do know how to calculate a, a squared, a cubed, up to a to the n. And well, one way of doing that then, of defining e to the a, is simply using power series. Because remember the power series of e to the x? e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus dot dot dot, which is the sum from n from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Well, we can do the same thing for the exponential of a matrix. It's defined by almost the same formula. 1 is just the identity matrix. x is just your matrix A, and then A squared over 2 factorial plus dot dot dot, which in general is the sum from n from 0 to infinity of A to the n over n factorial. Okay. And the question is, well, how do we calculate this? If we're lucky, then you know, the matrix A to the N is easy. So let me give you an example. Suppose A is 0, 1, 0, 0. Then, well, A is that, but let's calculate A squared. A squared is 0, 1, 0, 0 times... 0, 1, 0, 0, which becomes 0, 0, 0, 0. So you see, the square of A is the 0 matrix, and in particular, A cubed would be 0 times A, which is 0. A to the 4th is 0 times A cubed, which is 0. And in particular, any powers of A greater or equal to 2, is just a zero matrix. So you see then this infinite series actually just becomes a finite sum. So in this case e to the a is just the identity matrix plus a which is 1 0 0 1 plus 0 1 0 0 which is 1 1 0 1. And in general, if some power of A is zero, that's called nilpotent matrix, then the e to the A is easy to calculate because you just use a, the infinite series just becomes a finite sum. Now, the question is though, how do you do it for matrices that are not like that? So what about quote unquote the general case, but not general, general, but still good. So in general, and again, not 100% general, because not all matrices are diagonalizable, but in general, suppose A is diagonalizable. Suppose A equals to PDP inverse. And let me give you an example. Take A to be the matrix 0, 5, minus 1, 6. Turns out you can diagonalize this matrix. So A is PDP inverse, where turns out the eigenvalues are 1, 0, 0, 5, and the eigenvectors are 5, 1, and 1, 1. If you're curious how to find P and D, there's another video I've done why I diagonalize a two by two matrix. And you just use that technique here, and you basically find for this matrix, the eigenvalues are one and five. So you put in a diagonal matrix with entries one and five. And then for P, you just put corresponding eigenvectors. So for example, you find one eigenvector corresponding to one is five one, and another eigenvector corresponding to 5 is 1, 1. 
So this is how you find P and D. But the question is, how can we use this to find E to the A? Now, well, we know that A equals to P, D, P inverse. Well, then A squared, that's A, A, and that's P, D, P inverse, P, D, P inverse. But no clues how nice this is. We get P inverse P is the identity, and the identity in multiplication doesn't do anything, so we literally get P, D, D, P inverse, <laughs> like P, D, D, but P, D, D, okay. And we get P, D squared, P inverse. So you see, A is P, D, P inverse, A squared is P, D squared, P inverse, and in general, what you get is A to the N is P, D to the N, P inverse. And this is super useful in calculating E to the A, because then, what is E to the A? Remember, by definition, it's the sum from zero to infinity of A to the N over N factorial. And that's the sum from zero to infinity of P, D to the N, P inverse over n factorial. And what is that? Well, so you see p and p inverse, they act like constants with respect to the sum. So you can actually pull them out. So p sum from zero to infinity, d to the n over n factorial, p inverse. But this is just the exponential of d. So that's p e to the d p inverse. Almost looks like pi m, but uh, or PDEs, I guess. But the point is actually uh, e to the d for diagonal matrices are very easy to calculate because if you take powers of diagonal matrices, if you take d to the n, it turns out. It turns out you just raise the entries by n. So d to the n is 1 to the n, 0, 0, 5 to the n. So I'm not going to prove this, but it turns out if you do e to the d, that just becomes e to the 1, 0, 0, e to the 5. And let's do this now to calculate e to the a. So remember a was our matrix. 0, 5, minus 1, 6. Well, then, by what I said, e to the a is then just p e to the d p inverse, which is just 5, 1, 1, 1. Now, well, e to the 1 is e, 0, 0, e to the fifth, and 5, 1, 1, 1 inverse. inverse and then you can just explicitly calculate this and in fact let's do that so we get so 5 1 1 1 okay. e 0 0 e to the fifth and then a uh, 2 by 2 matrix is not too bad to invert so it's 1 over the determinant so 1 over 4, and then 5 and 1, you switch them up. So 1 and 5. 1 and 1, you put minuses. And there you go. And then you calculate this. So 1 fourth, 5, 1, 1, 1. And then e times minus 1. So just e, and then minus e, minus e to the fifth, and 5e to the fifth. And then you calculate that as well now. So you get 1 fourth, I think 5e minus e to the fifth, e minus e to the fifth, minus 5e plus 5e to the fifth, and minus e plus 5e to the fifth. And there you go. This is the exponential of a. How nice is that? And 
Couple of remarks. So how do you do it if A is not diagonalizable? It turns out you can use the Jordan form for that. And the nice thing is the Jordan form writes it in terms of those nilpotent matrices where the powers, eventual powers are zero. Second remark, uh, there's nothing special about E to the A. Whichever function you have a power series of, you can replace it with matrices. And in fact, there's another video I've done on cosine of a matrix. Just the same idea. Lastly, if you're wondering uh, why this is useful, this is super useful in solving systems of equations because if you want to solve something, a system x prime equals the ax, your solution is literally given by e to the at times a constant constant vector and in this case very similarly we can calculate e to the at which here becomes just uh, one fourth times one constant so c1 uh, 5 e to the t minus e to the 5t and then e to the t minus e to the 5t plus some other constant of one fourth in fact, the one-fourth don't even matter. You can just pull them in the constants. So C2 times uh, minus 5 e to the t plus 5 e to the 5t and minus e to the t plus 5 e to the 5t. So you see, once you have, and again, C here is just a vector with values C1 and C2. And you can check this by just you know, multiplying them out. So indeed, if you get the exponential of a matrix, it's actually useful. You can use it to solve systems of equations. And there is another video on that. Uh, the video on cosine of a matrix elaborates on that a little bit. But I just wanted to show you a cute application of diagonalization. All right, I hope you like this linear algebra, linear algebra extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.